I've been playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds quite a lot recently, in fact probably a bit too much, and the load times can be a bit annoying on that, so I wondered if throwing your games on an SSD versus having them on your hard drive actually makes a difference to obviously the load times, and actually see if there's any performance difference. In this video we're going to be testing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds as well as Doom 2016 and GTA 5 to see what, uh, what the difference actually is. Now the methodology for this testing is going to be fairly simple, we're going to install install a load of games on a hard drive relatively similar to this one and then we're going to be installing a load of games on an SSD. Now to make this as interesting as possible I'm not actually going to be using a SATA SSD like this one or even like that one there. We're actually going to be using this, the Samsung 960 Pro M.2 drive. This one is one of the fastest drives at least on its own that you can get without going into raiding SSDs. This is the one terabit model so we should have plenty of space for our games and this should make uh, for a pretty interesting test. Testing the games is also going to be fairly simple we're going to be starting the games from a shortcut on the desktop with obviously Steam already loaded and everything like that and then we will be seeing how long it takes to load into the menus and then once we're into the menus how long it takes for us to press continue game or you know story mode or just actually launch a game in pub into how long it takes to load into the game ready to play. Of course I ran the test multiple times both per drive and per game so hopefully these results will be fairly accurate for you and of course I did also benchmark the games to see any actual FPS performance differences. The thought behind this is especially for something like GTA 5 where it's constantly streaming in new models, new bits of the map, new uh, just everything, well especially while you're driving fast through the city which is the level that I'm or the, the bit of the level that I'm currently playing on to test. In theory this should be a little bit faster with an SSD as it can access those files a bit quicker, load them into RAM and all that sort of stuff so it'll be interesting to see if there is any performance difference. So without further ado let's get into it. With Doom there was actually a pretty massive difference in the cold boot uh, loading times. That is the first load that I do of the game after a fresh system reset. So with the hard drive that was 1 minute and 15 seconds. With the second boot time, so once the game had already been booted up, close it and then reopen it again, that one was 36 seconds. With the SSD there basically was no cold boot time and it only took 37 seconds and there seems to be a little bit of margin of error here as the second boot boot time actually took 40 seconds, so around about 38-39 seconds average versus obviously considerably higher for the hard drive. When it comes to booting into the game from the menu system, you're looking at 12 seconds for the hard drive and 8 seconds for the SSD, so saving you a full 4 seconds there per time you launch into the game, which actually if you play Doom quite a lot might add up. When it comes to the FPS numbers, somewhat not surprisingly, there really wasn't a massive difference here. In fact, the hard drive actually ended up getting 3 FPS average more uh, just in my testing. That is perfectly within margin of error though, so I'm really not too concerned with that. Moving on to GTA 5, loading in from clicking the icon on the uh, desktop to into the menu system was actually fairly similar. The hard drive was getting 53 and 55 seconds, where as the SSD was 51 consistently, so not a massive difference. I explicitly didn't test loading into online here though, as there's a lot of variability in the times that it takes, and that's mostly due to Rockstar trying to allocate you into a server. So I just tested the story mode loading in, and there's actually a pretty significant difference. The hard drive went from having about 44, 45 seconds load in time uh, to the SSD having just 24 and 23, so almost a halving. And this could translate into pretty decent online times as well, especially since the, the colloquial name, at least with my friend group anyway for GTA 5, is Loading Simulator. So perhaps having it on an SSD, especially an NVMe one, could actually be pretty good for you. When it comes to the FPS numbers, there really wasn't a difference here. In fact, the average was actually identical between the multiple benchmark runs that I did per test per SSD, uh, and there's really no difference here at all. In Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, this is also pretty interesting. The initial load up was actually where we saw most of a difference where we're seeing 33 to 37 second load up times for the hard drive versus a straight 18 seconds for the SSD. When it comes to actually loading into the game and getting to that initial start off island there was actually no difference in times here basically 14 seconds across the board. When it comes to performance there was also basically no difference here either a 1 FPS margin of error is certainly pretty acceptable. I did run multiple tests and multiple benchmarks so you could see this as a slight win but also minimums and maximums are almost identical too. So 
so I really wouldn't consider that a massive difference. So as you'd expect, there really isn't much of an FPS performance difference here. You're not going to be getting the competitive edge by throwing your games on your one terabyte NVMe SSD, but if you do want a little bit of a faster loading time, especially for something like GTA 5 where you spend half your time loading into the game, then it is a sizable difference, and especially in online, uh, if you can actually cut down the physical loading so that it's purely connection worries that you need to you know deal with, then that's actually going to be a, a nice and decent difference. So that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and informative. If you did, hit that like button, let me know in the comments down below, and feel free to subscribe as well. I'm going to leave some other videos over on that side of the screen for you in the subscribe button, somewhere over here for you too. And also feel free to check out the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below. They genuinely help me out, they support me making these videos on a weekly, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis. So if you could check those out, that'd be fantastic. There's also a few other links in the description for you as well. My Bitcoin address if you're a miner and want to donate to me. Uh, and other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. Check out some of the other videos over there. We'll see you all in the next video.